Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So nice to see your smiling faces again. I imagine every time that you turn on my videos, you're smiling, excited, full of joy, and just thrilled to see what new thing I'll talk about on this channel. Today, I wanna start things off by thanking some new Patreon patrons. They became fans of this show and they are showing their support by becoming patrons. I wanna first thank Christian Moen for becoming a fan. Thank you so much, Christian, for becoming a fan. Your support is truly appreciated. And Fode, Foad, F-O-A-D, thank you for becoming a fan as well. You are like Madonna, one name, quite profound. Today, I am going to be going on a tour a tour, but actually, before I do, uh, before I get into actually the meat of the show, I forgot one thing. Uh, does does the video here look a little bit different to you? Do do I do if I if I move around? If I if I just kind of like go like this, any, you notice anything uh, neat, cool? Uh, is my face in focus? If I do this, if I do this, hey, how's it going? Uh, I got a new camera. This is uh, being filmed on a new camera. And it means that now, I mean, it's a Sony A6400, if you are so curious. It's supposed to have the best face tracking around, and I move around a lot, so if it can keep up with my face, then it is definitely the right camera for me. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, if you like the new camera, or if I should return it, even though I can't, because the return window has already elapsed. <laughs> Shit. Today, we're going to go on a tour. Uh, let me know in the comments, by the way, if you do like the camera or not, or just have thoughts, feelings, and strong uh, objections or, or, or platitudes to say thank you that the video is better. Uh, uh, today, we are going on a tour of a brand new, well, not brand new, it's a new evolution of a thing. Uh, uh, what, my favorite framework, I'm not gonna mince words here, uh, React, JS, had a new, release yesterday today yesterday when i was filming this i'm filming this what is this friday <laughs> this is what i spend my friday nights on just filming in my bedroom by myself while my family sleeps that's how much i enjoy talking to you they had a lovely new release doing version four you might be saying wait isn't react on 16 uh, i'm talking about the dev tools react dev tools version four came out this week and I figured it would be a good use of your time, my time, his time, her time, their time, my time, you know, everyone's time, to just kind of go through and see what new goodies they have in store for us and kind of together explore all the new features that will make the developer experience, which is what you are spending most of your time doing, being a developer and trying to debug things, and how these new React dev tools are going to make your life in my life, I'm not gonna do that whole thing again. You get the picture. How it's gonna make things better. Uh, let's delve in. Okay, this is the blog post of the new React Dev Tools. They are excited, and I am too. Uh, a lot has changed in version four. Um, they're talking about the support. Uh, definitely a way to kind of, if you are using an old version of React, kind of get with the new stuff so that you can actually take advantage of this thing. So React 15 and 16 are supported. 16 supports all the things and also react native support which is really neat uh very interesting that uh it only supports react native six uh, 62 that has not yet been released yet so i'm sure they're using that internally at facebook so that's fine for them but for the open source community uh you are skating on that thin razor's edge this is a very nice blog post that tells you just the high level information but what i actually want to delve into is the uh change log in case you don't know what a change log is, it's how things change. That's not helpful for you at all. Uh, and together, I just want to go through this blog post together because uh, this has all the information and I could try to memorize it and recite it back to you, but I think that's not a good use of our time. So I'm just going to go through together and we're going to explore the new dev tools. Uh, piece by piece de resistance. Uh, the first thing is that the performance is better. And I've been playing around with the dev tools, and they are smooth like silk. If you've ever tried to sleep in a rucksack, a burlap rucksack, that was React Dev Tools 3. This React Dev Tools version 4 is like the finest silk, cashmere, uh, honey butter. It's smooth. It's good. It's fast. Uh, 
definitely was rebuilt from the ground up to take to make sure that it was as speedy as possible. Uh, that's definitely a thing that we'll see or not see because when things are fast, you kind of just stop noticing them. And then as soon as they get a little bit slower again, you're like, hey, what happened? But that's just human nature, don't you know? Uh, the next thing is the component stacks. Uh, I don't have a demo for this either. Uh, it's a per feature for component authors as a way to automatically append the component stack where an error may occur. This picture is an example of it, uh, where it says, you know, the, the inner tag name prop has been deprecated and that occurred in list, which occurred in app. So um, rather than giving you the JavaScript source line, which is not that helpful, it's actually giving you the component name where this is occurring. So let's get into some of the more meaty things, which we're going to demo together. Um, I'm actually going to be using my blog for this. Uh, where's the URL? There it is. Because I realize I don't really have a good demo uh, app to kind of play with these things around. I definitely need to get like just a, um, a, a, a smorgasbord of, of an app so I can just kind of play with these things in real time with you. But this is my uh, vlog. It's using Gatsby, which is using React, so I can actually take advantage of uh, all the new dev tools here. Uh, this is the new components panel of the React Dev Tools, the profile panel. I'm not gonna be going to the profiler panel uh, for two reasons. One, I wanna keep this video to under hopefully 15 minutes. Uh, and two, I don't know it that well. So I don't wanna give you things that are incorrect. That's the thing that I try to do correct on this show is not give you misinformation, because that sucks. Uh, this is the new components panel. It kind of replaces the overall uh, React Dev panel. And you can see here, this is the new interface for scrolling through all of your components. And I'm gonna just go through and hit all the points in here one by one. The first one is the component filters. So uh, you can now change what the dev tools show. So for example, this is what Gatsby is showing by default. Um, it's a little bit <laughs> nonsensical. If I try to like even go onto like the blog in here, uh, you can see how it's really hard to decipher what's going on here. I have this icon component, I guess, and then this context consumer. Uh, this context consumer stuff is everywhere. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't really know what it is. Uh, what does this button do? Does that log it? No, it doesn't log it. Uh, I can do this to log it to the console. Context consumer, children, theme, yeah, I don't know what that is. All I know is that this context consumer is mega noisy and I'm not a huge fan of it. And now with these components filters, I can actually have it be hidden. Now, one of the things by default here is that it's hiding uh, div tags. So actually let's turn that off for now just so I can actually see what's going on here. Let me actually go back here, click on blog. This is a anchor tag which has uh, 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 children is an array which contains the icon and the blog text. Great, so this is the icon. I don't really care about this context consumer. I don't really care where it's coming from. It's really noisy. It's, it's everywhere, like context provider, context consumer. So what I can actually do in here is go into components, add a new filter. I wanna say if the type of component, so these are like React has class components, function components, uh, host components, which are like divs, uh, but also I can have in here uh, context components. So context providers, context consumers. If I don't want to, if I don't care about that, that's not what I'm focusing on. I can have the reactive tools now hide them. Click that. And all of a sudden my tree has been updated. Let's actually do some more things. Um, what else should we hide here? Um, uh, look at these forward refs. This is, so I'm using Emotion, which is a CSS and JS solution. And it is very noisy in here. So what I'm seeing so I have forward ref that I could hide. So if I wanted to do that, I could go into here, uh, do type, and I can say uh, forward ref. But there were some forward refs that I do care about. And you can already see in here that things are getting easier to read, which is great. Uh, Gatsby link, location, anchor tag in here. Um, but instead of filtering out forward ref entirely, we're just gonna do uh, things that match emotion. Cool. So I have forward refs that still exist, but anything that's emotion, I just don't care about. Like that, I, I, I trust that emotion is doing the right thing and it's gone. 
uh, which is lovely for debugging things. So you can kind of play with that, especially when you're trying to focus on things. Uh, you can have filters already set. You can just toggle them on and off if you want to. Uh, a, a lovely feature for actually understanding your application better. Uh, no more inline props. This is a style choice, but I think one, it, it's for two reasons why this was done. One, to make it faster, but also it makes it easier to browse larger component trees because you don't have that noise in here. All the props are on the side over here. Uh, also, if I wanted to, I guess I can change the props. This is being given here. Uh, banana. Oh, look at that. Harry Wolf Banna. That's my uh, cousin related to Eric Banna. I think that was a thing that you can do before. You can really modify props that well, but yeah, that's really cool. Uh, and then two other features that I find to be really, really awesome is uh, this rendered by list and uh, this owner's tree. So uh, these are really, really cool. Um, DevTools 4 is now adding a rendered by list in the right-hand pane that allows you to quickly step through the list of owners to speed up your debugging. So let's say you're trying to figure out where some props coming from in the blog icon. Uh, I can see what rendered that component in here. Oh, this is kind of neat. I'm filtering these out, so I actually can't click on that because it won't show in the tree. Uh, I can see the location is there and keep going up. The uh, uh, My nav link is inside of there. Uh, this is also the hardest thing to be debug because it's all this like meta code with Gatsby and React Router and yada, yada, yada. But you know, I can kind of go into my index page. This is the entire page to see that's where it's rendering. So I, I have all this ability to kind of you know, find the exact thing, like let's say I'm trying to figure out how I got that prop, I can then easily look into this rendered by list to then go up that chain to see where those props were being passed down to understand what was going on. Uh, the inverse of this is the owner's tree. Now this is a very interesting idea, very interesting idea. Uh, these, this is the list of things rendered by a particular component. And what's tricky about this is that if I go back to my lovely, let's go here, you can't escape my left, this div. Uh, not a bad example. Let's go up, I wanna go into default, which is I think is the entire nav component. Uh, if I go here, this is my nav. It's an anonymous component, so it's not going to uh, show anything. I think if I were to do function nav, uh, actually if I do const nav equals this, and I do export default nav, if I save that, when I refresh, this default should turn into nav. If I understand how React works. Do I understand how it works? There it is, nav. Uh, the reason for that, in case you're curious, is that uh, when you have a function in JavaScript, you can call, I love sirens, Manhattan all the time. Uh, when you have a function in JavaScript, there's actually a name prop on that. And that's what uh, React uses by default to get the display name to show in the React component tree. Before, when I just had it export default, it was an anonymous function, which means that it had no name, so that's what was showing under store default. But now it actually has a name. This is, this is my nav component here. So for now, I'm going to leave that so you can actually understand what's going on. Might be a reason for you to change how you code so you can have better debugging tools. There's also a display name. Sorry, tangents, tangents, tangents. Any case, I can double click on nav and see all the things that it is an owner of. Uh, it owns rendering uh, nav link, f line justifies, sub nav links, uh, because this nav component is not just rendering its immediate children. It's actually rendering, it's rendering its immediate children, but it's also rendering things inside that as well. Like I have this root nav component. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Oops, spotlight, go away. Um, I have the nav component, I have this link. It technically owns link image link h1 uh, because these components belong in the nav component that's what owns it if i go back to here uh, it's list of things rendered by a particular component things it owns so for example if i were to go into do I have any other complex components in here uh, this sub nav links component owns the, no, it doesn't own these because these are still being rendered by nav. If subnav links components render things inside of that, they would be the owner of that itself. Uh, so it's an interesting idea to show these things. You can actually see what components are rendering other things. You can actually click onto here to see what, like this owns nothing because it's being rendered by nav. Uh, if I go to here, there's another example for this. I have the main, not owned by anything. Uh, let's exit out of that. 
main is by layout. What does layout own? Layout owns render, SEO, nav, and footer. So layout renders those things. If I go into here, uh, it can see that it's running uh, global, SEO, uh, nav, and footer right there. So these are the components that it owns. But if I go into footer, I can see that footer owns all these things. And it's kind of a way to learn a new code base by breaking down the things that components own. Very, very useful. Another thing, no more horizontal scrolling, which is lovely uh, because it's actually very, uh, of course, so uh, Brian Vaughn is the uh, uh, main engineer on React DevTools 4. He's also the author of React Virtualize React Window, which is a uh, windowing, JavaScript windowing tool. So uh, in case you know what windowing is, uh, if you have like content that's larger than the viewport. So this is the viewport is the screen right here that I'm boxed into. Uh, if it's larger, larger than that, the way to optimize the page is to actually not render the things that are outside of this box. Just as far as you can tell, it doesn't exist. With windowing, it'll actually uh, take that out of the DOM, throw it away, and then just in, in just in time when it's coming down, render it so that it can actually be shown. Uh, definitely take advantage of that here, I'm sure, but also just how it's laying out things in here. So actually, let's bring back everything. Uh, things can get really nested. It just kind of indents it in so things get... Uh, it automatically adjusts nesting indentation to eliminate horizontal scrolling, which is a very neat idea. It makes things relative to how deep you are going. This is very far deep, but it's never going horizontal. So you can always keep kind of your, your context everywhere you're going. And this is definitely using window. So you can see as I'm scrolling, things are hiding. So I'm just scrolling really fast. Hook support. Got a lot of hook support. Things, uh, the previous dev tools I think had primitive hook support, but it was kind of added after the fact as opposed to with the fact. So now you actually have it being built into it. Improved search UX, great. And this is another one too, uh, higher order components is now being displayed in a in much more uh, pleasant manner where it's a badge as opposed to rendering the two components that compi compose it. So for example, this is a forward ref. I believe in uh, React DevTools 3, I would see forward ref and then sub nav links, like two layers there. And now they've kind of collapsed it because this is effectively one thing that's being rendered and it makes it a little bit easier to understand uh, what your application is doing. Uh, and this is a really nice one. <laughs> it restores your selection between reloads. One of those things that uh, I'm sure everyone's been annoyed by is let's say I want to select this uh, MongoDB link right here. If I refresh the page, presto changeo, and it's still selected. So a quality of life thing that will save countless seconds for countless engineers across the world. So the amount of dollars that feature saves is gonna be tremendous. And there's suspense toggle, which I can't show you because I don't have suspense. Um, then we get to the profile changes stuff, which I'm not gonna go into. Uh, Brian, which was a very interesting choice and, and, a, and a very cool choice, is that to teach these new features rather than me talk at you about them, he actually created a interactive tutorial for you actually to play wrong and give you uh, examples of it. So the things that you can see in here, let me make this bigger so you can see it. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting was uh, toggling suspense fallbacks, which I can't do, but you can, for example, click on email client and there's a suspense button. So I can say, I can tell DevTools to suspend this component and it shows this loading state, but because suspense boundaries act like error boundaries, and again, this is way early days they're definitely more pertinent i think to people inside facebook that is that are using suspense but here's a suspense boundary for email client and here's a suspense boundary for label and when i suspend this because there's a suspense boundary around this label i only see suspense around here so each one of these these things is discreetly loading if i still load this then everything shows loading again so that's a kind of a neat thing um what was another thing that i couldn't really show uh higher order components yep we talked about that um, owners, this is a better example. So app owns header list and list is being rendered. All its list is running all those things inside of that. List doesn't loan anything. Uh, header owns row and add item. So things to actually learn and play with. That's the main tour that I'm gonna go with right now. There is changes in their profiler, like big changes in the profiler section of the DevTools, but Again, I don't have the experience to really talk to you about that right now. 
definitely a fodder for a future, future episode when I get around to making it. Okay, so that was a wonderful tour of the new React DevTools 4, which I'm super excited to play around with. I'm curious to see if you've already started playing around with it as well, what your thoughts are of it. Uh, it is speedy, much faster, much more pleasant experience to do that. That ability to save the place of your last selection on a reload is going to be great because I would argue that most applications don't have hot reloading enabled because it's been finicky and it's just a hard thing to do. Uh, but I would say much more applications have live reloading where you make a change and then your entire browser reloads. And now that the React DevTools can restore your last spot is pretty much what you want anyways. So it's a lovely, lovely new feature addition. Uh, congrats to the React team, uh, Brian Vaughn and uh, Dan Abramov in particular for watching this. Very exciting to see. Uh, I think it was at least four to six months of time. It was, it was, it was a huge time investment. And, uh, I, I'm very, very happy that they watched it. Uh, if you did enjoy this episode, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you want me to delve into other things about the React DevTools, happy to talk about it. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. You get more of these videos every week for free. But if you do want to show that you appreciate them, become a Patreon subscriber and show me some of your love through your wallet. <laughs> uh, uh, hope you have a good week and I will see you again after that week's over with a new video because that's what I do. I make new videos. <laughs>